Hello Capricorn and welcome to your new moon lunar cycle insight video for the cycle beginning with the new moon in Virgo on the 9th of September and culminating as we reach the dark moon in Libra in prepar preparation for the new moon in Libra on the 8th of October. So this is a lunar cycle that begins with those earthly grounded energies that we've been working with for some time, still in effect as we have the beautiful earth trine in, in, in earth signs with Mercury in Virgo, Saturn in Capricorn in your sign and Uranus in Taurus and of course the sun and the moon coming together in the sign of the priestess in the sign of the great earth mother Virgo itself. As the month continues to unfold our attention turns much more towards our inner world, our inner healing and our relationships. As we prepare for Venus, the love goddess, to go retrograde in Scorpio, this lunar cycle, and we have a lot of activity on the Aries Libra axis as we head towards the equinox point and we have a beautiful full moon, full harvest moon in Aries too. So this video will talk you through how those energies will affect you personally as a Capricorn or a Capricorn rising or even you might be a Capricorn moon like me. So the new moon in Virgo takes place in your ninth house and this is the house of higher wisdom, higher spiritual learning, it's the house that's associated with Jupiter, with Sagittarius. So when we see the new moon rising here in the earth sign of Virgo, this gives us a good opportunity to ground our wisdom, to connect with some practical earthly inspirations and set our intentions to bring them into reality. The earth trine that's forming is actually happening in your firehouses of your birth chart. So you may find that there are some downloads, some inspirations, some perhaps new ideas for creative projects that come through that you might want to set into motion during this lunar cycle. Um, it can also be Capricorn, a clearing out, a purging, a purification of old belief systems. The ninth house is where we hold on to what feels true to us. It's where we hold on to our religious or spiritual ideologies, those things which can really build the core foundation of our personality and how we express ourselves in the world. So there may be some old beliefs, particularly old spiritual beliefs, that need to be reworked or rewired around this time. Particularly as the new moon will be sat in opposition to Neptune in Pisces in your third house, the house of the throat chakra, the house of communication, the house of the nervous system and neural pathways. So we can find here that we may be having to wash away some of those old thought patterns and programs. And with the third house, we are always looking at how we're expressing ourselves, how we are using our throat chakra and communicating in the world. So maybe there might be some old blockages that rise up, you know, beliefs around why you can't speak your truth that need to be cleared around the time of this new moon as well. And when we look at the third house, we can also see it's connected with our social networks as well, online and in person. So maybe there is a need to practice some kind of discernment around the connections that we are sharing our energy with at this time. You know, any kind of leaky boundaries, um, things that are draining or toxic or self-sabotaging can be very much highlighted by this new moon. So we can really use this as a time of mental release and detoxification. Also, at the time of the new moon, 
Venus will move into Scorpio where she will begin her retrograde journey on the 5th of October. She's already in her retrograde shadow. She entered that at 25 degrees Libra on the 2nd of September. So we're already working with these Venusian themes. You know, we might find stuff rising up already in relation to our intimate connections, finances, self-worth, ability to enjoy life, which are all Venusian themes. So when she enters Scorpio, where she will spend the majority of her journey and where her journey will be at its most potent and most alchemical, she will move into your 11th house, Capricorn. So on the 6th of September, as the new moon rises, she will enter this space of your birth chart. And this is the house that is very much connected in a similar way to the third house with our friendships, with groups, with circles, with communities that we are involved in. So we may find that this Venus retrograde, as well as the usual themes and the deep transformation that will occur for all of us in the areas of relationship and intimacy, that this may also play out in those groups and friendships that you are involved in, in at this time. So there may be a rising up of intense feelings around these areas of your life. You may become very aware of any connections that you have that are not serving you and they will come up to be released during this period. Um, it can also be people that you collaborate with in relation to your big dreams and goals and visions. And it can also be connected with how much, how balanced the energy of giving and receiving is in your life. So we may be, you know, working on some dreams or goals or visions because you always are Capricorn, you know, you're always building something. And we may not be feeling like we are receiving adequate compensation for our time and energy, or perhaps there's issues around how to share out the resources that you have with others, you know. And all of these things can come up to the surface around this time. And as Venus reaches the heart of her journey here next month, you will be being asked to let go, to release all of these things that are rising up at this time, the things that come up while Venus is in her shadow period are very profound indications of what we will be working through during her journey, which is going to take us right up until the 16th of November. And she will station direct in Libra on um, the 16th of November. And she will cross back into Libra, interestingly enough, on Samhain Eve, the 31st of October. And when she enters your 10th house, you may find the focus of this retrograde shifts to your career, to your purpose, to your work in the world. And again, we'll be looking at how our relationships interact with our work with our service, what we are sharing with the community, sharing with the world at large as part of our purpose in this lifetime. She will be in opposition to Uranus in Taurus in your fifth house three times during her journey and this can really highlight issues of self versus other. So it can indicate where we are not being fully authentic in our connections with others, where we're not feeling like we can share our gifts and talents and step up and step out and shine. It might also reveal where we're not allowing ourselves to have any fun, where we're shutting our heart down, where we're disconnecting from the fifth house energy, which is all about creativity and play and romance and joyfulness. 
So you being one of the more serious signs of the zodiac Capricorn, this can really bring awareness to just how heavily you carry your duties and obligations. And of course, that's part of your magic because you are the sign that deals with legacy and longevity. And you do see the karmic consequences of all actions, which is why you always act with duty, responsibility and integrity. But sometimes, especially in our relationships, there can be a need to let that guard down and just to let ourselves be spontaneous and be joyful and take pleasure in life and our connections with others. So that can really be something that we are working with this month and throughout the whole retrograde period. So we reach the equinox threshold on the 23rd of September this year. The Sun and Mercury will travel together into the sign of Libra, the sign of the scales. And wherever we are in the world, whether we are going down into the autumn energies, the descent into darkness, the withdrawal, the turning within, or whether we are heading towards springtime and the blossoming and the blooming and the regeneration and regrowth, for this moment in time, for this day, the days and nights are equal length. And it's an opportunity for us all to find balance and harmony within ourselves and within our own lives. So as the soul star moves into Libra, he will cross the threshold into your 10th house. And this can be the time of the year, Capricorn, where you feel that energy of the 10th house that we discussed earlier, that um, drive towards purpose, towards work, towards building something that will last for the long term, highlighted. And when the sun transits our 10th house, we can often, you know, feel more energized in regards to our career. We can feel like we are perhaps reading, receiving some recognition for the work that we've been putting in. Perhaps we will be noticed by people in positions of authority who will give us a little bit of a, a boost up. So it's a nice place for the sun to, to transit for you. This year, however, the sun will be opposing Chiron in your fourth house as it crosses the equinox point. So Chiron has been in your fourth house since the 17th of April this year, um, Capricorn. And he has really been calling you into some deep karmic and emotional healing. This is the house where we deal with our karmic legacies, with our ancestral lineage, with issues to do with home and family. It's the womb space of the birth chart. It's where we withdraw to feel nurtured in comfort. So Chiron here can highlight the wounding that we have in this area and be calling us to do some deep soul healing, perhaps releasing the past working through our ancestral line and taking responsibility for doing the clearing. Um, or, you know, we may have been experiencing or revisiting wounds or times of our lives, perhaps our childhood, when we didn't feel like we received the love and sustenance that we needed. So for you, at this time, Capricorn, you may find your attention needs to be balanced between this inner work, you know, the obligations that you have towards your family, towards your home life, and where you want to be in the outer world. So we're looking at the home and hearth versus career and purpose axis at this time. And this will be further illuminated by a full moon in Aries in conjunction with Chiron and in opposition to the soul star in your 10th house on the 25th of September. So this can be a time where these issues really rise up and we see how far we've come doing this inner healing work, you know, doing this inner journey just before Chiron prepares to go back into Pisces the following day where he's going to head back into your third house 
and he'll be asking you to clear up any communication issues that you didn't work through <laughs> over the previous seven years when he was journeying through that house of the birth chart. So it can be a time of deep soul healing and perhaps it will be a time of having to claim your autonomy, claim your sovereignty, claim your boundaries from those old wounds and old karmic connections, old familiar ties. And it can also be a transit that teaches you about taking responsibility for your own emotions and your own emotional well-being. As we have your ruler also squaring this full moon from your sign. So you may find yourself really working through how you express your emotions, how you share your emotions, how vulnerable you allow yourself to be at this time as well, Capricorn. So it's a deeply, deeply healing moon. Venus will officially station retrograde on the 5th of October in that 11th house that we discussed earlier. So that will bring amplification to these energies as the journey really starts. As the, the Venus retrograde begins for us all, it will be focused in those areas for you. We are then heading into the dark moon period, just before the new moon in Libra, which will fall on the 8th of October. And that moon is gonna be in square to Pluto in your sign. So again, we see this kind of tension between our relationships and our emotional needs and our desires to build, to create. And it can really be an interesting start to this Venus retrograde period as Pluto, in a similar way to Venus in Scorpio, is all about the intensity of relationship, the intensity of emotion and feeling, which isn't always an area that Capricorn is comfortable with. <laughs> So I'm going to pull a card for you to complete this reading Capricorn from the Goddess Oracle by Amy Sophia Maharishinki. is interesting with regards to the fifth house energy that I described and uh, this card has actually come up for another sign I can't remember which one it was now but you may have it twice if you're checking your rising sign as well and it happens to be that one and this is urinome and the word on the card is ecstasy and urinome is a creator or a creatrix goddess. She is said to have sang and danced the world into being. She is all about the ecstasy of being alive. And you can see her dancing there with her serpent, which is the kundalini energy, the energy of awakening and creation. So this really links in with that fifth house energy that I described you know, Venus will be moving through your 11th house in opposition to Taurus, who's been in your 5th house, and um, to Uranus, who's been in your Taurus 5th house since the middle of May this year. And this is an energy of awakening your primal sensuality, sexuality, an energy of really allowing yourself to fully experience the pleasure of being alive, of being here in a body, the joy of expressing yourself as a unique individual creative soul. So if there are fears around doing that Capricorn, if you are worried what your friends will think, if you are worried what the world at large will think, if you break down and go beyond those binds of conformity, then this can be a cycle of learning how to just be yourself and how to just let this energy move and flow through you because one of the main themes that will be happening with this Venus retrograde as she moves between Scorpio, this sign of the dark feminine, and Libra, who is 
a much more conformative or conservative sign. We will all be working through this energy of allowing our true deep soul self and deep soul desires to be seen. You know, we'll all be working with the energies of the shadow feminine, which have been so maligned during, you know, these thousands of years of patriarchy. So we're going to be reclaiming those shadow aspects. And one of those aspects with Scorpio is the ability to embody our sensuality. It's one of the sacred sexuality mystery schools. So you could feel Capricorn like that is rising up for you as well during this period. It's a little message from you are known for you. So I thank you so much for listening to me. If you wish to connect with me further, you can join my Facebook pages or groups. There's some links below this video. I'm sending you so much love for a very deep and transformative lunar cycle.